Okay, cool. So I'm doing things a little bit differently today. Um, this is normally I do these kind of how I write. I do breakdowns of my tracks, and um, that's really fun. Um, but I don't. No one can really see what's going on on the screen. So today I'm dressed up in my well, my brother's um, gaming headphones, and hopefully um, I can show you how I wrote this track, which is called October. Um, this is more of a housey kind of vibe, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the actual software. So I just wanted to um, talk about that. The thing is, well, the biggest problem with this is that when I try and run Ableton, which is my music production software, with OBS, which is what I'm using to record this whole thing, um, the CPU on Ableton just goes through the roof, and so it starts like the audio starts dropping out and stuff. So that's kind of annoying. Um, I'm gonna I, I've I put it on the highest um, like one of the highest sample rates in Ableton's preferences. So hopefully. It, um, it won't be cracking up as much, but there will be quite a few bits where it might sound a little bit, uh, it might drop out and stuff. But hopefully this will just give you an idea, and hopefully you can hear what's going on. Um, if anyone knows how to change that, and how to make it sound better, then let me know. So, yeah, this track's called October, um, and there's sort of a lot of different elements to it. Uh, I guess the first bit, which is the sort of leading trademark sound on it are these uh where is it they're these kind of this big kind of synth sound so if you just i'll isolate this so you can hear it right you can hear it's like crackling a little bit Shit. so that is basically we'll just dive into that actually that is a uh, an analog synth and I put a chord MIDI effect on it and um, this tape plugin from uh, oh, where's it gone from the producer called Elephant and it's a free plugin basically it just uses Ableton stock sounds but it creates a kind of wonky effect so you get this sort of slightly analog sound which I really like um, and it just makes it sound a little bit more sort of I don't know yeah analog sounding basically so that's really cool. And I've basically automated this over time. So you kind of the, the cutoff and the frequency are kind of changing. So you get a bit of movement, if you know what I mean. So let's hear it. So it kind of gets bigger. And then it'll come back down again. See? So I find that it's really important to create movement in my tracks. Um, rather than just have it sort of at one base level, because um, that gets really boring if you don't do that. Um, so that's kind of the first part of this track. And then you've also got, I guess the other synth sound would be these kind of, this synth lead instrument, uh, which sounds like this. Oh, no. That's also an analog sound. Very similar. And I'm doing the same thing. Opening up, automating the filters. The release is getting wider. This is like creating a build up. Back. So that's quite good for like creating build-ups and drops, I guess. I mean, I hate that word drop, but this is the first time I've tried to do, sort of create a drop, so to speak, in my music. Um, and, and the way I do that is with automation. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Let's have a look at some other bits of this track. Um, I guess like we could talk about the drums. So there's actually quite a few different elements of drums here. Um, I've got, I think I've got three different drum tracks. So the first one is this kind of, and I think this is actually how the track started. It's this um, kind of uh, stock Ableton drum rack drum kit called the Trans Transil Exit Kit or something. I don't know what that's called. Um, yeah, Transil Exit Kit, and um, they 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 got these kind of quite interesting sounds on their own. 
thought well, that sounded pretty nice. And then I've added on top of that, I've added in my own drum beats from a bunch of samples I just put together into a, a new drum rack and I added that on top so it sounds like this. Oh, it's... And then there's a final drum rack kit which is just a lot of percussion basically and that all together sounds like this. Oh no, I don't put it on. Bit of cowbell there. Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, that's the drums, and they all kind of come in and out at different times. So you know, you, you, it's good to I think create various drum sections. So you know, there's always sort of something new coming in or something coming out, um, and it's just again it makes it easier to create a bit of movement in the track um what else we've got oh some big chords here this is just like a nice pad and i've again automated that to make it sound wider and wider and wider in the mix so this is good again for creating a, a drop so it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger skip it I'm sorry, it's just sounding very uh, crackly, which is annoying. But uh, okay, what else we got? Um, oh yeah, there's this sort of at the beginning and end of the track, you've got this vinyl, vinyl sort of sound. It sounds like someone's just put a tape on and I kind of, maybe it's a little bit naff, but I kind of liked doing that. It, it made it sound like someone's putting on a tape. You, you never heard that... Um, a song by Jungle called Casio and at the end it's like they've turned off the tape cassette player and I thought that was quite a fun little little bit of finish so I've done that with this track so you can hear it here at the very start look you hear that hiss and that's just basically a bit of vinyl dirt a bit of tape hiss and it's just it's subtle but it kind of adds something i think and what else have we got that's mostly it i think um oh yeah you have this sort of breakdown bit sort of towards the end of the track where you, it brings in a bass because actually there isn't much of a bass in most of this piece but um there's one bit where it all cuts out and you just got this proper like heavy bass which, and that's created with uh operator so you can listen to that uh, I'll play it with the whole, the whole thing to start with. Can you hear that proper like housey kind of thing, right? And that just kind of builds, it keeps building. Got those big chords, the filter opening up. And then cuts out. So anyway, that's a lot of fun. Um, and the way I created that was basically just um, just through messing around, actually. I mean, I don't know too much about synthesizers. Um, I mean, I've learned, like, over time, and I've always been interested in them as a kid, but I don't know how they kind of... I don't know all the functionality of them. So I spent a lot of this year so far just um, trying to really understand the basics and how, how they work, because I think once you can create your own sounds, that's really, you know, that gives you a lot more power and flexibility. Um so this one's called Dum Dum, which because uh, it sounds a little bit like Dum 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 Dum, um, and you know, Operate is quite a, initially it was quite a weird synth to learn, but I think once you understand how these different um, oscillators work, then it sort of becomes a lot easier to create your own sounds. And um, so yeah, this just came from a lot of experimentation, but um, you can get some really nice, satisfying basses out of 
operator. So, um, and in fact, all of these synths that I've put in to this track um, are not, they're not presets, they're actually just pure, um, purely created uh, on my own. And that's quite nice because then you can, you're getting sounds that you really, you know, that come from, from nothing and it's, and it's much easier to get a, like a unique sound, I think. Um, let's see what else. I think that's really it. I mean, the only other bits, I've, I, I've got into using a lot of reverse kicks to kind of create build-ups. Um, a bit of a cheesy move, but it's really effective. So, like this. And that just kind of creates a bit of transition and that sort of thing. I guess the last thing we could talk about is the vocals. Um, what I've been doing recently is doubling up my vocals a lot um, so you can get quite a much fatter sound. So let's hear the vocals on their own. It's all just the same line, but sort of done in four takes. Born in October. I could have blown it away. This has got some compression on it, EQ. Over. And what I find is chorus on the vocals, just a little bit, um, on top of like the doubled up vocals, it makes it sound even wider, which is um, quite a cool effect. And I use that actually almost in all of my tracks now. And then you've got some reverb, um, and then here's like a sort of delay, um, which which works quite well if you can automate it, so it sort of comes in at the tail end of um, of a verse, just to kind of let the, the vocals linger a little bit. So, like here, you can see what I'm Gotta I mean. find a good reason Till we start wondering why uh, it's, it's quite a cool little way to, I don't know, create like a sense of some, uh, again, like kind of a build up, a transition. Because at that point, then it goes into like, the kit comes in and stuff. So, um, I mean, let's let's see. I think that's really it, to be honest. Like, I'm not going to play the whole track because you guys can watch that and stream that on my YouTube channel or whatever, on Spotify, which you should. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll do for now. But basically, uh, I'm a, I hope that gives you an idea of what I'm doing. But unfortunately, it's so difficult to use OBS and Ableton at the same time. It's just like crackling up. It's going fucking mental. But hopefully that will work. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. And, um, yeah, tune in next time. Bye.